so I opened up one of my quilt kits that out of the store because it was honestly the only minky slash cuddle fabric I had in the shop or in the studio. And now I have to finish this quilt top and that's what I'm going to do tonight for everybody. So what I'm working on is, is a quilt kit from Shannon Fabrics and this is it right here. So this is going to be Puffin's Christmas gift this Christmas. His new winter blankie is what I've decided to do with it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it's really, it's really cute fabric. Check out, it's got all these little owls and foxes and leaves and little squirrels. He loves, oh, he loves to, he loves squirrels. But anyway, so I've already got it all cut up into two and a half inch, five and a, five inch and 10 inch strips. Finished approximate size is 38 inches by 58 inches. The cool thing is though, it comes with a lot of cutting instructions. So you, if you wanted to recreate it, you could just buy Minky or Cuddle Fabric in the future and do it. So this is what we're gonna do tonight and I'm gonna completely do it on camera. So bear with me. It's not that bad, it's just long strips sewn together. Super easy on the serger. I've already got three, let's see here, three strips sewn together. <laughs> here we go, okay. Okay, so I've already got three of them done, so that's about a fourth of it, I think. What I'm using is a four thread overlock, and I turn it over to the back. You can see the back of it, there it is. And what it is, um, and I'm just using the general purpose foot that came with your what came with the machine. So any any four thread serger could do this. Of course, I only have baby lock sergers on camera and all that fun stuff. So if you want to make one of these, all you have to do is do a four thread overlock set your knife blade to the widest width which in this case on this serger the triumph is 7.5 and i have the stitch length set at three stitch length at three i'm gonna swap to the other camera hey puffy you heard your name didn't you yes i was talking about you so should i tell him he can't look at it <laughs> you never know okay Swapping the camera, and we're gonna get started. There we go, okay. So, like I said, I have my lever here at overlock. I have my, neutral, my differential at neutral, and I have the stitch selector in the letter A position. My stitch width, the cutting blade, is at its widest point, 7.5 and my stitch length is standard and I have it set right on the number three. Okay, so let me grab me a couple of strips and we're going to get started. And all I'm going to do is look at the picture as I pick them out so it's pretty easy. So the, the green one with the animals on each end are five inch strips. The brown, which is like this Oh, more like a fake fur almost. Those are five inch strips. But then the orange and white ones, the four, the four groups of those, there's four strips of each. Those are two and a half inch cut strips. So we're gonna start out with a five inch strip of the green. Let's see here. That is, that's the 10 inch. So that goes in the very middle. And here we go. Here's the five inch strip. Now on this, I want to, Minky is messy. It's, it was really messy cutting it, cutting it up. <laughs> and it was, it's still shedding a little bit. So just be forewarned about that. Some, this print is actually kind of directional <clears throat> so, I want to make sure my foxes are standing, their heads are going towards the top, like this, right here, okay? 
So that's one thing. But to see then the little deer, the Bambi deer is upside down there. So I guess it really doesn't matter. Does it? You know what? It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to grab the piece I've already got started since I looked at it a little closer then. And here's where we're at. So next we're going to add a brown fake fur onto that side right there. And that's what this is right here. Super duper soft. Oh my goodness. Maybe Puffin will get it. Maybe Richard will. We'll see. I'm sure he'll share it with me. <laughs> okay. And all I'm going to do here, now I have two, uh, two size 90 needles in. That's really for heavy stuff, my go-to size. And what I'm going to do as best as I can, I'm going to line up the raw edges with the edge of this, of my serger right here. And that's what I'm going to use kind of like as a sink, as a guide to feed the fabric through. Okay. And I'm not in no hurry. I'm just going to line it up as I go. Boy, my white jogging shorts are really going to be messy, but oh well, it is what it is. There we go. And we're off. I'll have to show you my fake fur collection sometime from Shannon. I just have a weakness for it. I have some really big pieces upstairs. And they're probably going to go into a costume. It's better on, you know, some fabrics when you're doing this, you can just let it feed on through. Now with Minky, because it's so slippery, you really just want to take about four inches at a time and let it feed through. Otherwise, you'll get wonky, wonky, wonky um, seams. As you can see, I'm just lining up the edges right there. Right there is the edge of my table. And just feeding it through. A little bit at a time. Now since Minky is kind of stretchy, you don't want to stretch this as it's going through or, or it will have a wave to it. What I mean is don't pull back on it and stretch it as it goes through. Just let it feed through naturally. And really, if a person wanted to, you could pin the ends together, but look, that one's coming out. I'll have, you'll have to square up the ends on it, regardless of what you do, because you know, it's going to slip, slip and slide at some point. Okay. Get that little thread a snip. That one's done. There we go. Now we're going to put, we're going to work our way this way. So it'll be the, the bubbles, the burnt orange, and then the pretty green fox, fox fabric. And we're just going to keep on working our way over on the layout from left to right. And when I'm done here, I will look at the screen and answer questions. It was hotter in blue places here today. Warm, 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 warm. And just sewing so on, let's see, this one, one, two, two more strips past this, and we're past the halfway mark. So it really does go quickly.
I may start sneezing everybody. Just be forewarned. <laughs> Have a fake pro I bought several years ago, which is what Puffin loves to sleep on this type of stuff. He will choose this even in the hot heat of the sun over a nice cool sheet. Oh, that brown stuff. It really sheds. It really likes to shed. Okay, there's that one. Now the orange solid. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but every time I pick up one, fibers just go flying and drifting off in the air everywhere. <laughs> Come on, you. Let that one slide a little bit too much for my taste. There we go. That's better. Remember when I said you're going to have to square up the ends of this? No, there, something like that is the reason why it's going to shift no matter what you do. But it's okay. These are meant for comfort. And also make a great gift for a um, great juvenile quilt. Nice and warm. soft. And in the instruction, it says to have a half an inch seam line. With my little bit of trimming and where I have my needles set, that's what this is equaling. And this is one of those patterns, it's called the Fab Five five tenant strips we'll make one of these now here this piece is a tenant strip of the green foxy fabric and that puts us past the midpoint. Uh, that's the five inch, that's for the end. There we go. There is the 10 inch. And I am going to, I am putting this one, I'll make sure this one, the foxes are this way. Okay. That's just me. If you're doing one, you can do it any way you want to. It's all good. And what I did, I pushed that presser foot all the way up because when you do that, you get, you get some extra height to put thicker fabrics under that presser foot. I guess I should, could have put the knee lift on it, if I can find it. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's in a drawer over here, I think. I want to get an extension table for my search.
after this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six more strips to go, and it will be complete. You know, and I guess if you didn't want to line it, put a lining on it, you could just serge all the way around the edges and make it a single, a single pile um, throw, but I'm going to, I will get some more of this some more minky. I'm actually thinking about using flannel as the backing for this. That's what I'm thinking right now. I'll have to see if I have enough. I have some really cool flannel that's, that's dyed like batik fabric that I picked up when I was in Canada. That might go on the back of this. Okay, almost to the end of this one. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting there. I'm going to go ahead and there is what I've trimmed off so far. See, not that much for all that. There it is. See, it's getting some width to it now. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You gotta love Minky. You just gotta. Sometimes it's really nice to get a break from cotton quilting fabric. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's just like you're doing something totally new and different for a change. <laughs> Those of you that sew a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's always nice to change things up a little bit. Have some fun. Okay. Here we go. After this one. Five more to go after this one. We're going to count that. This would have been a. This would be a good project to do. Like when I did, if y'all were, were part of the group then, remember when I did the surgeathon on YouTube, where I surged all day and made eight quilt tops. Well, I'm still quilting those, by the way. <laughs> but this would make a great surgeathon. get some new stuff in today. I've been going through that. Some new thread kits. And... Oh my goodness. Magnets. And... Got um, a shipment of the Zirkle mag uh, magnets in. Those are so nice. I love those things. Okay. Now the white background circle strip. Here we go. This one's next. <laughs> <laughs> too funny oh my gosh it's raining fuzz <laughs> everywhere <laughs> I'm gonna have to really give my serger a deep clean after tonight that's for sure 
it will be time for, for the air compressor. Okay, got that started. And I'm covered in it, literally covered in it. <laughs> yeah. But it's all good, it's fun. <laughs> So one, one time I allow myself to get messy is when I'm surging. position here. Keep on keeping on. Okay. Ouch. This is the, the, the one side of it right here. Then we're coming over this way. Woohoo! So we have, we have four more strips to attach. One, two, three, four. Yes. Just four more strips. And this will be the brown fur. Wait a minute. Something doesn't look right here. Oh, I think I messed up. No? Wait a minute. Five, five, no. Oh. Five, five. Just a minute, everybody. There's three of those, but there's only two of them on the photo. Oh, let me think. That would not be enough for binding, right? Just a minute here. One, two, three, and I've already got one in. Well, I could have made it wider. I'm, it may get, you know what? It may get brown fur on the very edges then. We'll see. I don't know, I'm going to do it just like the picture and then we'll decide. <laughs> Interesting. Because there was two tenant strips of this that said on this chart here to cut it into five. <laughs> yeah. So, it's all good. Next is a five inch strip right here. And see the, the layout is just a suggestion. You can do it however you would want to, which is what I'm gonna end up doing it because I'm probably gonna add this dark brown fake fur onto each side of it. We'll see. That or I'll just add it to my stash. Start a, a minky cut of fabric stash, right? Here we go.
And we're off, and we're running. Do -do 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 -do. I kind of like the green on the ends, though. I don't know if I want to put the brown. I love the brown. But I really like the green with the foxes on each on the outside edges. I should have looked closer when I was cutting. Now I'm just gonna do it like the picture and I'll just save the other uh, the other two five inch strips for something else. Could always make a little teddy bear out of it or something. But I don't know. Okay, so I wasn't paying attention and somewhere I broke a thread. Right back there. So <laughs> I was busy yakking <laughs> and not paying attention, but that's okay. Like this. Okay. There we go. See, right there. Got about, well, I don't know, 20 inches down that seam when it happened. It's all good. So let's see which thread I have to replace, rethread. It's one of my, it's one of my needles. No, nope, those are still threaded. It's one of the looper threads. Okay, so I am good now. I am actually going to look at the screen while I'm doing this. And I'll answer any questions that I can. The lower looper broke. Okay, that's an easy fix. <laughs> okay, let me get this threaded and then I'm going to look at the computer screen and see what every, if there's any questions and then I'm going to go back and start searching again. Okay. There we go. There's that lower looper thread. It's all done. Now I'm going to do a little sew off on this though to make sure it's forming a proper stitch. I always like to do that when I've had to rethread. I actually always do that whenever I'm first setting up my machine. I'm going to stitch off on some scrap fabric just to make sure it's doing what it should be doing. There we go, and it is. We're gonna finish this one seam that I broke a lower looper thread on. You know, it just happens, everybody. I wasn't paying attention, blah, blah, blah. It's all good. So, I'm gonna line this back up. I'm gonna raise my serger needles all the way up. <clears throat> I'm going to slide that seam I've already done right up against the blade and get it back there, drop it, and now I'm ready to go and just pick up right where I was. Okay. And you know, <coughs> on the overlocker side, the manuals do say you can use um, top stitch needles in it. But here's the way I look at that. <clears throat> in a pinch, you could certainly do that. But for me, I want, I want to use what was designed for my machine, not just use a generic stopgap in an emergency situation. So please, if you want the best performance out of your machine, I have found over the years, the proper serger needle works the best over a top stitch needle in the overlock side. I'm 
not saying you can't do it, but if I'm going to take the time, my time and trouble to, do, to work to make something, I want to use the proper equipment that was designed for that machine to make it happen. That's just me. And in the grand scheme of things, surgery needles are not any more expensive, quite honestly, than sewing machine needles. In many instances, it's less expensive. <coughs> Okay, I have three, 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 three. Do I have three? I have three more strips to attach. Yeehaw. Okay. Yippee-io. <laughs> Where is that? I need the polka dot one, I think. Don't I? Yes, the white polka dot. There, there you are. You were hiding on me. Yes, I talked to my fabric. I can't help it. At least it never talks back. Okay. <clears throat> and this one is next. Try to keep that as even as I can. At this point, my ends are so are so staggered it doesn't really matter because <laughs> I will just have to square it up with a ruler and a rotary cutter after it's all all sewn together anyway come on there we go and we'll just start that all the way over boy that one really slid <laughs> okay There we go. There we go. That worked pretty good. Okay. And yes, when I get done sewing all these strips on, I'm going to take this out into the backyard and give it a good shake to get all the fuzz off of it. Okay, two more to go. Woohoo. And then we'll, I'll come back over to the other camera and we'll chit chat a little bit if you want to. Okay. So, yeah, look how far that was off, everybody. Wow. Oh, wait. No, I got to redo that. It, it didn't join right there. Check it. <laughs> so, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip it over. Right there like that and just come back to that 
in where I started. And I'm not going to let the, I'm going to turn the knife blade down. Well, no, I'm not. Mm, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to take it nice and slow and not let the knife do hardly any trimming. So here we go. fuzz from the brown it really does just look like little bitty tufts of, of fur quite honestly okay so next is the orange <laughs> it's snowing minky <laughs> oh my gosh okay so let's get this one started and see if I can't do a little better job on this one. Okay, right there. I'm gonna raise that foot up. That seemed to work pretty good the last time. Now. Yep, that got it. Just making sure it caught good. Yeah, you've always got to have coffee, right? <laughs> or at least this this sower do, does anyway. Okay. <clears throat> So in your sewing room, if you have like an oscillating fan and you're going to do what I'm doing, turn it off. <laughs> It'll blow this stuff everywhere. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay. Okay. last little green strip to go through and yeah I, I do believe that other piece of minky the brown stuff if you if I cut those in half it would be just the right amount to make binding out of so that's what is going to happen with that <clears throat> okay there's that Let's get that under that presser foot. Okay, that's a good start. It's got a good bite on it. <clears throat> now, our last seam for our little minky quilt top. With the little owls and squirrels and foxes and Bambi deer.
these two don't shed quite as bad as the the brown furry one and the and the um the brown furry one was really the worst but this orange here did have its moments as well <laughs> oh my gosh check out my pant leg look at this covered in it <laughs> Oh, could crease it. <laughs> I made a sewing apron when I lived back in Colorado. I can't find it. I know I packed it away and I put all this pretty embroidery on it and stuff. Yeah, so I had it as a Western theme. It had horses and horseshoes and cacti. Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened to it. I guess I'll have to make another one. <laughs> and there we have it. Alrighty. Put this down in my little scrap basket down there. Hooey. Okay. So. When I swap to the other camera, I will give you a bigger view, but check it out. From one side to the other. And I made a nice size little throw. Here to here. I really don't think it's anybody's 38 inches, but let me see. Nope, it is. It actually is, so yes.